Good evening and welcome to Interpreting the Word workshop. This evening we'll be investigating 2 Timothy 2, 1 to 2. So this is part of our Interpreting the Pastoral Epistle series. And it is also our foundational text for our for Cloud Seminary Plus. J just by way of a few introductory comments before we open in a word of prayer. If you click below there in, in the description, there are several links that will take you to number one to get the the PDF uh, document of this of this file, this text, so that you can mark it up as we as you follow along in the text. So highly recommend that the best way to follow along at this video is to print out this the PDF of this worksheet, or you could download it and import it into a notes app. I'll also add a, a description below so that you can access the video and how to do that, how to import it into a notes app. We recommend you could use OneNote, you could use Apple Notes or Notability. There's others, but really those are the ones right now that we that we recommend. And um, you can see it, you can watch a video on how you'd import them. We just did the example of Notability. Visit our website as well. There's a link in the structure analysis page. We have the different categories and you can, you can use those and follow along. I actually follow along on my on my phone when I'm working if I'm watching the video and then I'm marking on a tablet then I use my phone to 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 follow along with the category so really that's those are the resources that you would want to consider and then of course step bible which will also be in a link below if you want to do some of your own word searches in the text let's go ahead and let's open a word of prayer dear heavenly father we come before you today we want to confess that you are lord possessor of heaven and earth you are above all things, and yet your your presence is with us, not because of what we've done, but because of the, the, the mediation through your Son, Jesus Christ. Father, we as we come into your presence in a special new way, we ask that you would forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness, and we have this boldness and confidence that this is already done and is being done through the application of of the Holy Spirit. Father God, I pray that we would rest in this truth firmly and and strongly come boldly before your throne to receive grace. Guide us now as we study this incredible text on leadership, on equipping in the church. May you use this to further your kingdom. In Jesus' name, our Lord and Savior, we pray all these things by faith alone through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Okay, so we're going to get right in the, into the text. What I want to do is I want to read the text. And then we're just going to do a, a, a brief brainstorming just to really kind of set the context as far as equipping and uh, teaching in the church. We're just going to talk through some, some of those issues really quick. Then we'll read the Word of God, and then we'll do some some background into the preceding context of, of 2 Timothy. Then we're just going to break it down structurally, and then we'll look at significances. We'll consider how the law and the gospel relate. And then finally, we'll, we'll prepare a homiletical outline and the big idea of the text, and we'll be done. And so you could follow our our method. You could take our content, or you could you could do your own unique work and just um, use the same methodology. And so we just really hope that you'll you'll consider these things and and follow along. Let's go ahead and let us just uh, do a brief brainstorm discussion. So in this passage is primary concerning equipping and training leaders in the church. And so let's kind of just talk through, I just have some ideas here of, of how people do uh, leadership equipping, how it's been done. And let's just think about those, some of those questions that we might have, and then we'll, we'll get into the text. So let's go ahead and just create a section here. So we're looking at observations and questions that we might have before entering the text. So as, as I've done teaching in the past, as I've worked with, worked with people and equipping leaders, uh, number one, just, and, and this is good or bad, but there is, uh, there's a pressure in the church to send leaders, right? And so we want to equip them. We want to start new churches. We, we, uh, we want to send church planners. There's, there's this huge, there's this huge pressure. And this rightly stems from, I would say the source for this pressure is really coming from the, the great commission's call. 
because of that, there is so so from this we have this we have multiplication methodologies and movements. How do we mobilize, right? So this is this is huge. It's really it's really big right now in in the context of Western missions. How do we reach the unreached? And these are good things. So I'm not I'm not cr critiquing them. I'm just really setting the context before us. We also have other other methodologies where there's really this this um, resistance to raise up leaders. And and the hesitant the hesitancy is due to maybe there is someone's a very strong character and they don't want to share the leadership. So there's a resistance to raise up leaders, and and that's because there's really this unique, uh, charismatic leader. So this leader will raise up, will raise up individuals, but at the same time he's kind of holding them at arm's length. They're just his assistants. They're, they're assistants to the regional manager. They aren't, they aren't assistant regional managers. And so really maybe they have the title of assistant pastor or associate pastor, but really they're there to, they're to forward his agenda. He doesn't view them as equals. He doesn't share his pulpit. And, and so this is really, this is really also part of a context. And so they're just, they're waiting for their opportunity. And so that's another dimension or whether it's intentional or not, that's 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 what's going on. So maybe you've experienced that. I don't know. And so you really have that as well. Next, we have issues with with how to train, right? Leaders. And so this includes methodology and content. And in a global setting, the the methodology and content is is really reduced because of this pressure here. So they try to to lower the bar to make it easier. And with the lowering of the bar comes this uh, pushing against this push against deep theology or doctrine. Okay. So so good or bad, that's 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 the reality. And so maybe we have deep theology in in the US church. Maybe we spend time on doctrine, but in, in, a, in a global context, not as much because it's confusing. There's a lot of you have to teach logic behind and, and you have to teach maybe the original languages. And so there's really this push against going deep in theology and doctrine. So just the surface level, let's get the leaders trained and, and out there. And let's not worry about these deeper things that might reveal inadequacies, inadequacies or deficiencies or the fact that the people aren't ready yet to, to, to be sent. And I would say, and, and maybe there's more, we, we could, we could continue on this list for a long time. Another issue is that there is a methodology of, of equipping while sending, or we could say send and equip while church planning, doing ministry. So I'm not mentioning any names and maybe something comes to mind. We're not going to, we're not going to throw stones here, but the idea here is that this isn't done as much in the U S but it's done in a global context where someone feels the gift or someone feels the call to ministry and they send them out to start a new work. And the idea is as they're doing the work, we will equip them in the midst of that. And so, yeah, that's a, that's a very different way versus the traditional, which has been to equip and prepare, confirm, then send. So in this, so, so th these two are, these two are really in many ways at odds with each other, right? So in one, in one setting, you literally send them once they have the call, and then we'll train them in the midst of their ministry of their church plant, whatever it is. And the second says, no, we're going to wait. We're going to prepare them and confer them and send. So there's two massive different models. And so some people just say, it's just, we're prag pragmatists, whatever works best. All right. And others, others put pushbacks. So, some will say, you're not sending enough people. You're not getting the work done. And others are like, well, you're sending out people that aren't equipped and you're going to have more work down the road. Okay. So, uh, <laughs> 
<laughs> that you know we don't want to throw stones at each other we want to hear what the word of god has to say and we want to formulate and and prepare and and develop our methodology around with with the foundation of the word and centered on the word so let's go ahead and i'm just going to pull i'm just going to move this aside so that's kind of the that's the context of the debate i think i think that's fair and maybe you have another comment i mean if you have a different a, a different comment and you want to share something i missed you can put a make the comment below or or send us a message and so you can reach us reach out to us through facebook our facebook page cloud seminary or our website as well but yeah i, I mean the easiest would just be to to add to add to the comments maybe maybe you disagree uh, I don't think. I mean, this is just we're just laying we're just uh, laying the the foundation right now. But if you were to disagree, you could also go ahead and put your disagreement down below as we work through the text. Okay, so we want to focus on what the Word of God says, and there is a lot of passages that perhaps speak to this. We're just looking at one, but I do think it's very powerful, and I think it should be part of fund. It should be fundamentally part of the solution, and we don't want to be pragmatic. We only want to be pragmatic in as far as we are following the word of God. If we're not following the word of God or we're in con conflict with the word of God, we need to put aside our pragmatics and 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 commit to doing what the word of God is calling us to do. Let's go ahead now and let us read the word of God. And then we're going to discuss some background and, and then we're going to get really work, just work through the text structure, significances, and then homiletics, because I do believe that there is, there is a command. There's a big idea for us as leaders in the church and in, in global missions or in a local church setting in the U.S., there is there is a command and an imperative here. So let's go ahead, and I'm going to bring the Word of God up on the screen. Hear now the Word of the Lord. You then, my child, be strengthened by the grace that is in Christ Jesus. And what you have heard from me in the presence of many witnesses in trust to faithful men who will be able to teach others also. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God will stand forever. This is the word of the Lord. Dear Heavenly Father, help us to lay aside our pragmatics, help us to lay aside our own thoughts, and help us to, through the power of the Holy Spirit, understand these truths and apply them in our context, whether it's global missions, local church ministry, in Asia, in Africa, in the U.S., or in South America and Europe. In Jesus' name, our Lord and Savior, we pray these things. Amen. Okay, so maybe as we work through the text, you're like, "Wow, I kind of see, I see a direction here." So we don't want it. We don't want to jump to conclusions. We want to exegetically break this down. So uh, let's go ahead, and I'm just going to pull this out a little bit here. So we have the Greek text before us to the right. And uh, I'll read the Greek text, and and you don't have to know Greek to, to to watch this video. It might be helpful. I mean, for sure, it's helpful if 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 you know Greek, but you don't have to. And we'll be highlighting Greek significances when it's important. So let's hear the word of the Lord from Greek. Sun un technon mu, en dunamu en te kariti te en Christo Jesu kai Ha ekusas par emu di polon marturon. Tauta parathu pistois anthropois. Hoitines ikanoi esontai kai eteros didaxai. So that's in Greek. Obviously sounds different. We, we want to be pushing us, all of us who are participating in Cloud Seminary or receiving content, you don't have to know Greek to know the word of God to grow deeper in your faith, but we, we want to push all of us in that direction. That includes reading and hearing the Greek language. And we should all be striving to do better at that and to be and and to and to commit to the original languages because that is really where when there's a when there's a difference in English translation or whatever translation you're using, we want to go back to the Greek. The original languages are in, inspired in the autographs. And so let's go ahead. Let's just let's just begin our breakdown and then we will do structure. So we have here, if we're looking at the structure, we have a number one, there is a 
this is a subject, but really it's the object. And I'll explain what I mean in a second. So you have a, you have a U who is the U. This is the, this would be a, an object person. And so we'll look in the context because it's not identified. So if we were just preaching a specific text, we'd want to take a look back at the preceding context to identify this. And then we have, we have a conjunction here, un, therefore. And so whenever you see a therefore, right? Whenever you see a therefore, we have to look back what's going on in the preceding context. So when you have a therefore, looking back, we're looking at, we're looking at cause. Looking back, we're looking at, so when we're looking this way, we're looking at cause, or we could say foundation. When we look forward, we we can think of, inference or conclusion. Okay, I hope that's making sense. So we're going to look at the at the broader preceding context. So we're looking at the broader preceding context. So we're looking right now at at cause or foundation because we're looking back. It it's only an issue of direction, okay? If you look backwards, you're looking at a foundation. If you look forward, you're looking at the inference. So what I'm trying to get at is uh, is Second Timothy two one and two is an inference because of something else that was said. So we have to look at the the background context. Okay, so let's go ahead and let us let's just um, bring this up in um in an, in another place here. Hold on. So we're looking at Second Timothy two one. All right. So what we're going to do is we're just going to highlight some things as, as we work through here. So just to be clear, what's going on here? So we're looking right now at the we're looking right now at the background context to set up what we have in this passage. And so we'll be looking at who is the you, who is the, so right now we're, we're asking this question, who the you is, and we're also seeking to identify the speaker. We're looking this to identify the speaker or the actor. All right. And, and that's, and that's significant. Okay. So let's go ahead. Let's go ahead now and let us look at the preceding context. So we, as we start in the preceding context, it's chapter one of second Timothy. We see here, we'll just highlight some things. So we see that the, the author is, is Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus. So he is, who is Paul? Paul is, let's write this down here. Paul is the, the apostle to the, to the, an, the apostle of Jesus Christ. And he's, he's to the Gentiles. And Paul is known as the, the greatest missionary in the history of the world right and so no pride to him but that's but that's what he's known but that's what that's the reality the lord used him in an incredible way to do an incredible uh an incredible work and so this is a this is then a we can say a a missions church context the letter so it's so this is not a second we're not looking at background issues we're looking at fundamental issues to the letter and that's helpful for us. So moving on here the 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 receiver is Timothy my beloved child and so there's different places where Timothy is let's go ahead really briefly and we don't have a lot of time but let's look up in a dictionary just the background to uh, second Timothy is the second of the pastoral epistles just to highlight here the author is Paul as we said perhaps 6067 AD near the de near the death of Paul and Paul is writing from Rome probably and Timothy is an Asian minor so this is clearly a missions next generation church context so it's primary okay and we have the occasion and and maybe there's different nuances here fundamentally to to share his last thoughts and exhortations to Timothy to warn against false teachers and apostate brothers and to further encourage Timothy in the conduct of his ministry. So this is primary. This is both in the ministry in the local church and then also equipping leaders. And so I, I do think that this is this is primary for for what we're what we're working on right now. So let's let's come back to here now. So moving along here, so we have so so that's kind of the background. Timothy is clearly then the the recipient here. Just some highlights then is there's there's this big idea which the ESV rightly highlights the guarding of the deposit to trust uh, entrusted to you, and so 
there is a there is a uh, this is essentially a reminder of Timothy's testimony. Paul t- Paul reminds Timothy of uh, of his testimony and experience his his experience as a follower of Christ. And then there is this there is this inference on the basis of his testimony to several things to not be ashamed of Jesus Christ to share in suffering and the object here the object or that that could be uh that could be uh for the advantage the object is to share to share in suffering in relationship to the gospel okay so maybe maybe we want to have a an orange color there for really being being um accurate and then there is this description there is a description of god so this is this is a description of god and i do think that there's a description of god for sure because of this connection here but i do think that this is also defining what the gospel is and we'll come back there okay but this is the background who saved us and called us to a holy calling not because of our works but because of his own purpose and grace which he gave us in christ before the ages ages began and so there you have the the content of the gospel which is the good news that in that we are brought into union with christ and we have salvation through justification where we're uh, the 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 undoing of the of the Adamic curse and the life that we have in the covenant of grace. And so we're, we're going to come back. We're going to come back to this right now. We're just highlighting the background context to set it up. Okay. Paul was appointed preacher, apostle, teacher. Three things Paul was appointed. All right. So, uh, so he's both preaching the gospel. He's a leader in the church. He's writing He's sent from from Christ by the will of God. He's writing scripture, and he's also teaching. And so there is a distinction here between the work of teaching and the work of preaching, and maybe we can discuss that for another time. Okay, and Paul describes that he's not ashamed. He He's able to guard me. And so then there is this command to, fo- to follow the, a command to Timothy to, to follow the pattern of, of sound words. And then there's this command to guard the good deposit which has been entrusted to you. So there is a description here, okay? Or we could we could come back here. There's a description to guard the good deposit entrusted to you. So we're going to unpack that in a bit, okay? But this is the background. This is the background context. There's there then there is a warning of the of the the turning away of those who are in Asia. And so really we see here this this is the this is the context. Asia, this is missions, and this is in local church, the local church. The or we could say local church or visible church. All right. And so then he talks about those that that were faithful, uh, the house of Onesiphorus. And and here is the explicit reference to Paul's location he's he's in Rome okay and then and then we have our context and so we really have therefore right therefore so big ideas here coming back up here you have the therefore is standing upon several things number 1 Tim's test Timothy's testimony of of genuine faith the, the gift that was given to him by God, okay, God's God God's spirit at work in him. Now, for sure, probably this it's probably a double entendre here, where God gave us a spirit is both referring to um, a new heart, but then also this is a reference to the Holy Spirit, and because of the presence of power, love, and love especially, okay, and and his work there. So. Again, for another context, we're just highlighting. So we have this, number one, the basis of Timothy's testimony. Number two, we have the the, the gospel. So on the, base, on the basis of the gospel, Paul is going to command certain things. Okay? So that's the second big idea. 
And then on, on the basis of number three, others falling away. All right. So we really have three, we really have three ideas going on here. Okay. There's three foundations to which, or we could say building. So there could, it could be building towards a climax or it could be found three, three parallel foundational ideas. And that's really nuance that really lacks a distinction. The bottom line is this is the, ba the basis for then what Paul's going to teach and preach. And then, then we, and then we have our context, uh, second Timothy two, one and two. So let's go, let's get back to our text now. And so that's really the context. So the actor here is clearly, the actor here is clearly Paul, no doubt. The object is Timothy. And then we have, let's, let's, the, the foundation, we can write down the foundation here. Number one, Timothy's testimony. Number two, the gospel. Number three, apostates. And we're saying falling away. So these are, these are, these are huge. This is huge for what is to follow, especially then if we're thinking about the, the, the context being, this context being number one, the church, number two, leadership in the church, and number three, missions, right? So the Asia, the Asia context. So this is, this is missions, right? So beyond Jerusalem, beyond Palestine. All right. So let's, so let's get in here. So 